Hello everyone, this is East Dragon and welcome back to another episode of Fireman Heroes. As you can see here, we're at the end of Chaos Season, pretty much the first one ever, and we didn't even PB 0 out of 10, <laughs> even though we we're scoring slightly more on offense, plus 220 a match effectively when we give at least one bonus unit kill, so, or one kill for the bonus unit which in our case was Nino, and of course naturally that's because of what happened on defense this week, so let's get started. So of course there's the defense bug where <laughs> the casual, your defense, our defense here got treated as a tier 1 defense, so on tier 1 you can only have 4 units on defense. Legendary Zura, Legendary Crom missing, kind of a big deal. And I forgot to put a bonus structure, so they have five levels of fort advantage, so plenty of stats. The world's largest stat stacked yeah, type of. But naturally, it's not going to end well for us. They also have safety fence here. So they can just freely go for kills, and really, it would take a lot for them to lose a unit here if they're playing anywhere reasonably because they just need to make sure that none of their units are left in the attack range of their units, so You've had not a surprise fun. we start the season with 960. In terms of defense scoring of uh, Kira season, because of how offense scores, it's fine that generally that the max lift loss when you're not running Bonus defense mythic is minus 60. It does hurt quite a bit, but at least if your defense is reasonable, even if you lose about half your defense matches and you get unlucky with the time you have matches and you end up getting like minus 240, you can, as long as your offense is fine, you're still easily going to have to score enough lift to stay in bolts, because on offense, you effectively, with the bonus unit, you're effectively scoring as much as maxed out team in light for Astro season, plus 220, so that's nice. Our second replay of the week, it's just the classic unable to replay message. I'm guessing they got matched with us and immediately surrendered or something. I forget what scenario causes that, but third matchup here. Of course, we're just running a goofball team here. Not actually intended to be super good. We have Rally Speed on Legendary Sigurd, even though there's Prayer Wheel, so the only unit that can possibly get rallied, unless someone brings like an Elamine to fall, inflict False Start on Column 2 here. The only unit that can get rallied is actually just Legendary Krom, so... <laughs> and we also have it, so... If people hit and run off of certain units, it's just a field day. But this is not the strategy. Besides just going here, which I'm gonna be real, I'm not entirely sure why. We also kind of goofed our trap placement setup. I originally wanted it as it is now, but honestly speaking, we probably should have just had the On your heavy and extra pop because of course. Most people going into our defense are going to go with range snipe downs, not that they're going to run through the run, not melee snipe downs. So there's that. But speaking of melee snipe downs, we did a ton of that. Of Celts for that stuff on offense. A lot of when I was practicing against a lot of friends' defenses, a common theme is my only out. For a perfect win would be getting those melee king run snipe downs with legendary Nana. She was definitely helpful this week for picking up kills, because especially in Chaos Season with no blessing stat inflation, it's much easier for legendary Nana to pick up kills. But 
you still can't Let's go. Withdraw your blade. Here's Spring Maria doing some damage reduction moves, but unfortunately, Legendary Sage is squatting, so she needed more damage reduction to survive that. Mother, soon. Overall, again on offense, like we mentioned in our offense video, generally pretty boring matches, which is unfortunate, but I know for some people it is more fun that way for reasons we'll talk about next. The thing, of course, with Chaos Season, since there aren't any real sources of stat inflation other than bonus stats, you run into the issue where offense is just extremely much more powerful compared to defense in the sense of if someone on offense is trying to nuke a tank on the enemy's defense, it tends to be much easier to use the defense for the biggest thing, less HP. So super offensive strategies like Gale Force or even something or the classic hit and run are just going to be so good on Chaos Season offense, especially Gale Force for sure because there are fewer units on the enemy team and relative to the number of actions that you get on your Gale Force team, it is you do lose out on technically two actions compared to the opponent's one unit, but you have fewer variables in the enemy stats and who needs to go who. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever. It has, it's, it's both a pro and a con, but I think of it more as a pro. Unfortunately here our hex trap placement actually matters, so I don't think it would have ended well but I don't know. So on offense, people are having generally an easier time, especially with the random matchmaker. Because if you're not super rush climbing, chances are you're going to run into a pretty straightforward defense. No need for mercy. The single gimmick teams kind of a deal. So for example, harmonize Katria shenanigans with some fire save unit. Is definitely something I saw on a lot of my friends list defenses, but didn't see too much of it on my actual offense matches. But here we get the meme actually happening. The defense res snag drawback legendary will and that into the change fate in legendary from if people are don't know how to send the AI from have that drawback, but it's just one of the mean gimmicks of this defense, kind of like on Dark Season. Think of the plan. Not breaking the break. A gift for you. Giving Pathfinder to our ranged unit kind of deal. At this point, it's pretty much You've all we're going to fun. get out of our mileage here. Our opponent here doesn't have the kill power. To take out Legendary Sigurd in one round, so it's gonna be a problem for them against Legendary Vilna. In terms, also in terms of offense, Vantage is absolutely broken in Chaos offense because, of course, naturally, a lot of people design defenses similarly to how they would for any generic season, to some degree, of course. Some units are not anywhere to be seen because they are heavily reliant on having a high HP stat or something to pull off some certain shenanigans, but Vantage, especially if you have a brave weapon, and since because of the nature of Chaos Offense you can run basically whatever the heck you want, you can run Winter Bernadetta to get guaranteed Vantage setup with reciprocal aid or whatnot, so that tends to be super powerful because not too many people counter Vantage very well on their defenses. I did see a couple of Hardy Bearing units this week, but either A, Nino just face shanks the Hardy Bear, <laughs> which is kind of funny because we were running Fury Seal, so we keep chipping ourselves down, meaning generally those kind of plays were not as viable, yet we still were able to do it. 
for, I think, two matches? That's it. I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, that, that definitely was not great. The opponent's running Hardy Bearing, but the Hardy Bearing unit doesn't even do their job. And yeah, and we're running you know, all people, Hi. all units. Yeah. I was also pretty surprised that not a lot of people had roll attack defense on their dual croms, so you know just got casual one shots on them. Which just definitely should not happen. So here you can see legendary Nano was even picking up the kill on Bright Factor initially. That's why she had to attack later. But we still pick up the kill on Bright Factor regardless just because legendary low and AoE damage is pretty solid. Yeah, I think, honestly, Vantage going forward in Chaos Seasons, I'm, I don't know how many people are going to use it, but it's just so good. Again, especially without the stat inflation, you can still buff, generally, your Vantage unit to a pretty high attack stat, since the only attack you're missing out of is potentially attack from Mythic Blessings, compared to the enemy units, where they... For example, if there's two mythics on defense, they're missing out on 10 HP. Whereas you're missing out on only a few points of attack, fewer points of attack. So, generally, Vantage units will just have an easier time picking up kills. Units like Valencia and Pala, for example, definitely can sleep pretty hard because of the adept damage shenanigans. And she also can't go, which is super nice for the winter for the better reciprocal aid set up shenanigans. Open. There's that. Not being able to consistently set up Vantage on Minos would definitely did hurt us, but most of the time we could actually just chase tank one of the enemy units to set up Vantage, or we could initiate into them. Which is what we did, I believe, in the last match of the season. Yeah, it was the last match. Unfortunately, not very eventful. It was a pretty simple, straightforward vantage sweep. It had a hardy bearing. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Lid, lid. I know people say like Leticia, Letizia. I don't know. I should probably have like how to pronounce it. Like, but we don't do that here. So, of course, naturally, Nino isn't going to vantage kill her, generally speaking, if she has her max effects up, which, well, she didn't, so we could just initiate into her, survive the counter, and then easy real estate to vantage kill most of their remaining units. So, overall, once again, vantage holding on pretty strong on offense. I do expect it to get spammed out a lot more, once, especially once people start getting the gist of things. Although I do feel like Gale Force and Hit and Run will just be the most predominant, especially Hit and Run. It's the simplest, most straightforward offense strategy for the average player to use. You just attack one of the enemy units and leave. So. Generally, I think we'll be structuring our Chaos defenses to try and punish basic hit and run, but if people know what they're doing hit and run, there's not really much we're going to do there. But once again, we are just keep balling here, so... Kind of unfortunate that on Chaos Defense, for example, Duma's upheaval plus doesn't work because it specifically says Anima Season, which is unfortunate. And then there's honestly one of the more worthwhile mythics to still run defenses, of course. The one and only Medius. Just so good. Time to land the final blow. Having Kanto control and base kit, first of all, which really combined with a far save unit on defense can really make it difficult for some people to hit and run on both of your units unless you do some turn one shenanigans which is totally not out of the picture there's let's say do that but, the coolest. i don't know chaos season for sure i think people enjoy especially because of the bonus unit mechanic 
being able to use your Think of the version brand. one units to get on offense. Although, Let's talk of course, about our anyone feelings. who's been watching this channel long enough knows we've been using Nino during light season offense pretty much since the beginning. So, yeah, you, you can totally make your, your version one units viable if you, if you troll hard enough. But, of course, they're not going to be perfect. We've had our terrible, fair share of terrible seasons with Nino as our main carry on offense. It's just, you can't really do much about that, so. Corrin's the coolest! But at the end of the day, I think people generally enjoy Chaos Season more just because you can use more units more viably. It's just that the problem is some things are just too good in the mode because of the lack of stat inflation and in particular the offensive side of ether raids. But again, like a lot of modes in this game, there's not a really good way to balance anything. The reason why early on in ether raids Nino was remotely viable was again, back in the day, when the game first You've had your fun. The game mode first dropped. There wasn't as much sad inflation, of course. But also granted Nino didn't have that much that high of an attack ceiling, but back then there also weren't wolves. Wolves still and whatnot. So it was much more common for Nino to be able to get enough attack to damage to stuff. But even when the HP inflation era began, where units, of course, 60, like even the lowest BST units having 60, 70 HP was not uncommon. So, the fallout of that, of course, is yeah. then we have to pivot to Neo you know, being tankier, being able to wall enemy attacks. And honestly, speaking of rolling in the attacks, using Theory this week was definitely nice to get into, stay in vantage range more consistently. I think the biggest issue is that Nino, because she was bonus this week, she didn't have enough recoil damage just from Theory to get into vantage range after two combats. She actually needed three, which, me, which meant our vantage consistency was not great. It didn't bite us too hard in a lot of the matchups, but of course the biggest thing for us now in Chaos Season, now that we're essentially similar, back similar to the old days of Ether Raids when it first came out where stats aren't as prevalent, or HP in general stats aren't as prevalent, the main issue is being able to tank. There's a lot of instances where you know would barely get too shot by Dual Corin, or even like harmonized by Scythia if she was fast enough to get the, the attacks off. But I, honestly, the biggest thing I suffered this Curses season was Aiden because he really relies on the extra stats to be able to be fast enough, tanky enough to wall enemy attacks. So a lot of times he would only be able to wall. For example, the bonus Yunes on defense by making sure he wasn't debuffed at all. If he was debuffed, almost every time it would be a death sentence for him, which is kind of an L. Because of course, in our generic shenanigans, normally we would be able to have Kaden face tank those kind of attacks, but there's those kind of nuances. And here we are with a. I don't know if it's Carell, Carol, I just call Carol. Naturally, a pretty stacked offense team because we rush the line like usual. So, we're bound to always get matched up to matchups. So, those kind of. I'm definitely thinking in the future we're going to have to hex traps to be more far forward, but. Not sure what our opponent is doing necessarily here. I think they're just getting set up to go. The thing is here, they set up their Yuri so that he actually has more than 60 HP. Which 
helps out against Hex's Trap 10. That's a big thing about Chaos Season, is HP stat checks are also much easier to achieve. For example, like, Bride Fjorm here is pretty much a guaranteed isolation on most enemy units. Or... Like, Loki as well. With her gravity shenanigans and whatnot. Just overall, it's super nice. Unfortunately for us here, the legendary blood gets to pick up the kill, which is not great for us. But what can we do about it? Our team can no longer chase down anymore. So we're just unless, of course, we can have legendary sigurd survive their incoming attacks. Then it might be a problem, but. We can't really do anything at this point. The gravity from Fallen Star is just too good. Leave. So, now. We even have Deadeye here. And barely pick up the kill. Still a kill nonetheless. It would have to do quite a bit less damage though to miss the kill there. So it's not as close as it seems. If I check that right. Actually, no, if they have less attack in the first time, it's less damage. But I guess it was on the closer side. Well, with that, this is our replays for the week. Something about this bubble glitched out. <laughs> Probably might have seen T in the footage, but yeah, this defense is just unable to replay. Overall, we did alright. Of course, because it's the first season, people are still trying to figure out what the heck is good, what they shouldn't do on offense, and those kind of things. With that, it does look like we probably made top 1k here, although it doesn't matter because, of course, the tier 1 defense glitch thing. Intelligence system is giving all bolts and vaults max rewards. And it's they lowered the threshold to stay in vault, so that's nice. But it's always nice to be able to actually get the proper ranking. And then it feels like you actually earned the rewards capital. <laughs> Anyways, in arena, I was actually kind of surprised this season. Not very stringent cutoffs. Even though it's legendary Sigurd bonus during win season, I would think there'd be more people with him reasonably built up, or even just people with him who have him. Because of course, when Pathfinder first came out and all the Cav line variant shenanigans came about because of it, he was definitely a common staple on those kind of defenses, and they felt like they were everywhere. But I guess not. Maybe folks dropped out last week from tier 21 because you needed to score 766 to be able to stay. So that's my only guess for why this the cutoff is so quote unquote low this week. But yeah, on defense we just absolutely rolled because we were running this as our defense. <laughs> Such a meme scoring team. But this team score is enough to see even 766s on occasion. The ceiling is 766 for us, so there's that. Other than that, I think that's it. All these things are just going on right now. So, we'll be back when the results drop in. Whoops, forgot again, but we did make top 1k here, not that it actually matters. Cool, minus 120 in defense. This upcoming season, we at least have both Shara and Odor, so that'll be great. I'm sure Florina and Leticia, Leticia, I should probably figure out how to pronounce her name, are going to be annoying as bonus units. Same for sure as well. With his gimmicks, so not sure what we're gonna do. It is wind fire, so we can still keep our units pretty much as is. We just need to change up some, something if we want to. 
at this point. But resonant battles, once again, hopping around intervals 18 through 20. Not a surprise. Arena easily staying. Not sure if we're going to go ham this upcoming season. In terms of trying to stay, it'll probably depend on next week's bonus, next season's bonus units. Uh, because there's no real point in staying this season if we're just going to drop out next season. But until then, that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ethan Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye!